Welcome to the fifth video in the NASA 32 series. In this one, we're going to talk about two quick things, but it's things that I've been asked a lot about from subscribers over the past couple of weeks. The first is how you install a piezoelectric buzzer onto the board so that the board can not only tell you what's going on, but also can come in very handy for things like low voltage alarms, but also for use as a lost model alarm as well. And secondly, how you connect the board to the main battery voltage so that you can set something like a low voltage alarm but also that information will appear in telemetry streams so you can get that in things like your OSD and out of the telemetry port down here as well. So that's what we'll cover in this video, we'll do the buzzer first. Connecting the buzzer is pretty straightforward, this is a little 5 volt piezoelectric buzzer um, I've had this one in the spares bin for a while. You can get them for lots of different flight boards. This one is actually made to work with a KK 2.0, but all of them work the same way. Very simple device. If you put five volts in one end, it will make a noise. It is polarity sensitive though. So you'll see it has a red and a black wire on it. You have to make sure they're connected in the right way. Now, for these six pins down here by the USB connector, the middle two pins are the buzzer. If you turn it over and look at the back, you can see it clearly labeled. You need to install the cable onto those middle two pins and make sure if you've got a right angled connection that the red is at the top and the black is at the bottom. Double check that you're getting this in the right way. The buzzer will only sound if you install this the right way around. If you install it the wrong way, then um, nasty things could potentially happen. There isn't any voltage protection and bits and pieces um, on these pins for reverse polarity, so you just need to be a bit careful when you're doing this. Now we've done that, we can go into clean flight, which we'll do in a second, and we can configure this for low voltage, but we can also configure it as a lost model alarm by connecting it to a switch on the transmitter, so when we click that switch, the buzzer makes a noise. You can also get versions of these as well, that also have things like flashing lights and stuff on too um, and that can be very useful particularly if you're uh, flying around dusk or doing things like you manage to uh, crash it into a tree having the flashing light on the top as well as the noise can sometimes help you find the model. Second thing we're going to do is to install the main battery voltage directly onto the board itself this one you have to be so careful with because it supports, I believe, up to 6S packs. 6S will give you 22.2 volts. This thing only likes 5 volts, so you have a potential for some real disaster. And if you connect it the wrong way around, you're basically using this board to create a short circuit uh, across the battery. So be really careful with this. What I tend to do when I make my models is I usually add an additional JST plug onto the power distribution board anyway. Those of you that have seen some of my other videos will have seen me um, talk about that in one of the other quick tips on the channel. The way I've done it this time is I've actually connected a single red wire to the positive side of the power distribution board. We don't need more than a single red wire um, because this um, will work fine, it has a common ground. Now, this wire is going to hold whatever your battery voltage is, so you have to be careful. The pin it needs to go on is the positive pin of the VBAT connector, which is by the side of where the buzzer plugs in. So in the right hand connector is at the top. If the connectors are coming straight out of the board, then it's the connector that's farthest away from the edge. Double, triple, definitely quadruple check this. This um, will end in uh, disaster if you get this the wrong way around. I've had a couple of subscribers who have been trying things out and unfortunately managed to get positives and negatives um, backwards and had a tricky time. So now we've got that connected. What will happen is that voltage will appear on the pin on the board. On the board itself, there's a voltage divider and an analog to digital converter that will change this signal into something the board can understand. So the next thing we need to do is now we have these two things installed, is connect the board up to clean flight, enable the lost battery alarm, and also enable VBAT. So let's do that now. 
So here we are on the netbook and there's just been an update to clean flight. Um, recording this in the middle of February. So um, there are a couple of changes in the interface. The clean flight program is changing all the time. So be aware of that. The things we need to look at in here, obviously, first of all, we'll set up the buzzer and then we'll do the low voltage alarm. So the easiest way to make sure the buzzer is working, you should hear it beeping when you first power on the board. But if we go into modes at the very bottom now, you'll see that there's one called beeper. I've assigned this to one of my switches that moves. So you can see the, the value there. The way I've set it is once I flick the switch, it starts to beep. So let me just do that again for you. I'll flick the switch. And that beeping is the lost model alarm. So if you have a light on there, obviously the light will be pulsing in time to that noise. And it's great if you can't find your model in the middle of a uh, of a field that's got long grass on it. So just again, this is the beep when you have the lost model alarm. That's the easy part done. Next, we'll go into configuration. We'll set up the VBAT stuff. We're going to go down towards the bottom. And here is the battery voltage pieces here. Uh, to enable VBAT, we obviously want to tick the box. Uh, and then you have these three self voltages we'll talk about, and then voltage scale, which we'll cover separately, because you need to be careful about this. Minimum cell voltage. Now, battery voltage monitoring, the board will automatically detect how many number of cells the battery is, whether it's two, three, four, five, or six cells. The minimum cell voltage is as the voltage in flight that it will see for each of the cells it's detecting and set the alarm for. So you basically want to have the first number, minimum cell voltage, the lowest voltage you want to see. I would say 3.4, maybe 3.5 when it's flying. It's probably as low as you dare. Um, in reality, if it was set to something like 3.4, when you landed it and checked it with a voltmeter, you'd probably find that actually it was about 3.5, just over 3.5 for cell, which is as low as you'd want it. Maximum cell voltage, 4.2 volts per cell. And then you have the warning cell voltage, which needs to be uh, about 0.2 volts above the minimum cell voltage. And that gives you a little bit of time to land the craft once you see the low voltage alarm happen. That's all pretty sensible stuff. If you're not sure what all those numbers mean, then they, there is a video on the channel that talks about LiPo battery basics. I think it's called LiPo Battery 101. I'll put a link to it in the description. Voltage scale is not the battery voltage. Now, you have to be careful here. The voltage scale is the number that you change if you find that when you're viewing the voltage through telemetry or via an on-screen display, you change this number, this 110, so that the displayed number in the telemetry is the same as the actual battery voltage that you're measuring with the voltmeter. Now, 110 is fine for what we're doing here, but if I was to connect up a minimum OSD, I would play with this number until the voltage displayed in the OSD was exactly the same as the flight battery. If you uh, have a problem, you'll notice that um, this is probably the easiest one that you have to check. Uh, originally, I've, I've played around with this a bit over the past five, 10 minutes. If I set this to 124, then the voltage um, scale is all wrong and um, the voltage alarm is going off. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I set this to 124 and then save and reboot, That is the noise of the low voltage alarm. That's what it sounds like. It's that pulsing noise. If I set it to, back to 110, then the scale will be right. If I save and reboot, when it reboots, there we go, three built same, it's ready. I don't get the low voltage alarm. So be careful with that. Voltage scale is not the voltage of the battery that you're looking at. And that also means for the VBAT bits and pieces, if you connect the board without the main power being supplied, because it doesn't see any of these voltages, you will get that pulsing three beeps from the buzzer that tells you that it can't see or it's below the minimum cell voltage. Um, of course it is because you don't have a battery plugged in. So just be aware of that. 
um, if you're going to try and configure the board without the main battery plugged in over the USB cable you will get your battery voltage alarm going off. So hopefully that helps for those of you that are looking at buzzers and VBAT. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.